How can Tantra make people's sex lives better? Like, have you ever had sex where you're like, whoa, like life looks different after that? Ever since I started practicing this, I have had multiple orgasms every single time I have a sexual encounter. Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Love Bites by Dr. Tara podcast, where we talk about all things sex. And today, I am so excited because I have been so curious about this topic for a long time. I have personally done some research, some reading, but why not talk to the real expert on this topic? So here with us is Leola. Leola is the Tantra and Tantric sex expert and the best-selling author on sacred sex. So Leola, I'm so excited to have you here. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm so honored that you chose me to bring this wisdom and sexiness to your listeners. You, I mean, your energy gives like tantric sex. Sweet. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad that it's delivering. <laughs> yeah. You're, you enter the room and I'm like, oh yeah, she is the priestess. So you're a pleasure priestess. Right? Yeah. That's my self-proclaimed title. But and what does that yeah. mean? To me, what it means to be a pleasure priestess is to honor this sacred connection between the spiritual world and the physical world and the energy that connects those worlds, which is sex. Like okay. we're all here because of sex. Yes. And how can sex not be so spiritual and divine if it's literally our origin? It's why we're all here. Yeah. So to me, to be a pleasure priestess is to be in honoring of that, yes. to be turned on by life, to ritualize the human experience, and to see pleasure as this sacred medicine. Wow. And you wrote this book, and it's a bestseller. But how long have you been in the realm of like Tantra and Tantric sex? Yeah. So I discovered Tantra and had Tantric sex for the very first time about 10 years ago. Okay. Uh, I met a man who was not my type, but he had this vibrance about him. Mm. And I got really curious and I kind of pulled that thread into bed and uh, we had incredible intimacy, incredible sex. I had my first, you know, internal orgasms and my wow. first full body orgasms. And it wasn't even like he was doing any particular technique. It was really about the intention and presence that he brought. And he later told me that he previously dated a tantrika and he just was applying the things that, you know, she taught him. And from there, it kind of became a slippery slope where I wanted to know more and to lead in this space. And yeah, that was about 10 years ago. And it became just my personal practice for a while and my own journey. And one thing that I'll, I'll say about Tantra is it's so much more than sex. Too. Yes. Like yes. I definitely got into it because I was like, cool sex tricks. Like, yeah, I want all the cool yeah, sex like tricks. that's amazing. Like the pleasure that people yes. experience that practice tantric sex, but definitely tantra is thousands of years old. Yeah, and you a know, a lot more. Yeah, once you start living a tantric lifestyle, you soon find that it's so much more. Like, you know, you're yes. healing your inner child and you're healing your relationship to your body and you start to have more fulfilling friendships. And it's like, it, it changed everything for me. But it was the the sex tricks that piqued my interest. Hey, and I then, mean, sex tricks have uh, piqued my interest for many things. Absolutely. <laughs> for yeah. math, physics, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> chemistry. Yeah, science. But I've been, I've been working in the space professionally for about five or six years. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, when whenever I mention like Tom, Tantra or tantric sex, people always go like, oh, that's like what Sting does. Like he has sex for seven hours. Have you heard of that? Yeah, absolutely. I have. <laughs> and yeah. so is that something that he practices? Like is like he lives the tantric lifestyle, like you said? Yeah. So what I, the first thing that I think is important is to like really define what Tantra is. Yes. Let's go there. What yeah. is Tantra? Yeah. So the beautiful thing about Tantra is that it is very subjective. I'll also preface by saying that there are so many different lineages yes. and modalities of Tantra. You have more classical Tantra. You have neo-Tantra. There's Egyptian Tantra. There's evidence of Tantric influence in Christianity that has been adapted and changed. So that's one thing to understand that there yes. are just so many different perspectives. Yes. But what I like to look at is the word itself, Tantra, mm -hmm. which is a Sanskrit word. And Sanskrit is this ancient East Asian language in which many spiritual and divine texts were written. 
And tantra in Sanskrit, tan is to expand and tra is to liberate. So when you look at the word itself, it's really about living a life that is expansive and liberating. Ooh, yeah. I'm about that. And yeah, and what's so what's so amazing about that definition is that it is so subjective. Yes. What is expansive and liberating to me is right. going to be different to you. Right. And what was expansive and liberating to me five years ago is very different than it is now. Yes. And what will be for me in five years. And so Tantra to me is this constant self-awareness, this calibration into what way of being is going to be expansive and liberating to me in this chapter, in this season. And when we apply that to sex, yeah, for a lot of people, it does look like elongating pleasure for seven hours. Right. But you can also have tantric quickies as well. Right. So it's 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 very subjective and um, very much tailored to the individual. And my job isn't to tell someone what living a tantric lifestyle looks like for them or what sexual liberation looks like for them. It's about offering some different perspectives and tools to support them in finding what that means for them. So is Tantra a religion? It's not a religion, although some have created sex that in many ways look like religions right. and maybe even are governed as a religion. However, it's more of a lifestyle than it is a religion. Okay. So yeah. since it's like thousands of years old philosophy, there's obviously people that have interpreted and, and used it in different ways. Mm -hmm. And one of the most, I would say, popular ways people talk about it in the Western world, particularly in like the US and in Europe and big cities is tantric sex. Yeah. So what is tantric sex? To me, tantric sex can look and unfold in so many different ways. But I think that the one thing that is in common in tantric sex is bringing this level of presence and intention. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes that does require slowing down, which is where you get that seven hour sex kind of story or this like really um, like eye gazing and moving really gently. But you can have tantric sex that does incorporate, you know, BDSM. It's really, again, what it comes down to is this intention. And I'll also say that a lot of my work also falls under the umbrella of shamanic sexuality. They're kind of like overlapping fields. And in shamanic sexuality, there is something known as the four types of sex. Okay. Um, should, is it okay if I yes, go into please. those briefly? Yeah. yeah. So you have uh, reproductive sex, which is exactly what it sounds like and to me is the most societally acceptable. Right. It's like sex to have a baby. Yeah. It's like. Okay, great. Then you have recreational sex, which is sex for fun, for mm -hmm. orgasms. We love that. But very often recreational sex is trying to just get to the orgasm as fast as possible. And then it kind of ends with the orgasm. Mm -hmm. Then you have restorative sex. And restorative sex is the type of sex that leaves you feeling rejuvenated after. It's mm -hmm. the type of sex or intimacy that heals you on some level, your body, your mind, your soul. Maybe you have a catharsis. You don't know why you're crying, but something in your energetic system Ooh. wanted to be released. I've had know? that. I've cried after sex quite yeah. a few times. Yeah, restorative sex, basically. Wow. I also like to have sex when I'm stressed out yeah. or when I feel a headache coming on, for a lot of people, that's the time that they don't want to have sex. Right. It's like, I'm mood. stressed. I don't want to have sex. Because like, you know, research all show that stress is like the number one libido killer. So yes. why do you think like when I'm stressed, I want to have sex? Because it's kind of like a deep tissue massage, right? You go in for a deep tissue <laughs> it's massage. Deep, I don't know if it's tissue, but it's deep. <laughs> <laughs> you go in for a deep tissue massage and you're like, this is not going to feel great at first. But if I can lean into the resistance, if I can lean into the discomfort on the other side, I'm going to feel better. I'm going to have this amazing release. And oftentimes we're stressed because we're so in our heads worried about things and sex brings you into your body and invites mm. you to relax so it can be really healing to push through that like that yeah. frustration that discomfort yeah. and and lean in so this is restorative sex this is so restorative. what's the fourth type the fourth one is transformational. Oh, damn. Yeah. Is this like Tony Robbins shit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I would say restorative and transformational intimacy or sex are the more tantric forms. Right. And transformational sex is the type of sex that makes you look at the world in a different way. Whoa. Like, have you ever had sex where you're like, 
whoa, like life looks different after that. I feel different. I feel like a new woman. It can even be something as simple as like trying something new. Yes. Like, you know, connecting with someone of the same gender for the very first time yes. can be transformational yes. because it can change how you perceive your gender identity and the world at large. Right. Right. Um, but it can also look like having a full body orgasm. It can look like having a cosmic orgasm where you leave your body. Right. You know, it, it can look very, very different. And to me, that the beauty of Tantra is that you're letting go of the expectation of sex following this typical pattern that you usually go through where you touch the same parts and it ends in the same type of orgasm right. and you open up this possibility for a different experience uh, without attachment but just being curious and available yeah. and really present. Yeah, having like the same, 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 like it gets boring. For yeah. everybody, everybody in the world. If you're watching, listening, like, don't feel guilty if you're bored of the sex you have. Like, I think it's so normal to, like, talk to people and be like, yeah, I'm just kind of over it at this point. So it's okay. But, like, what do we do now is the better question, right? It's not just, like, I'm bored, it's over. It's, like, what can we do to kind of bring that connection and the desire for our partner back? And I think that's, like, a really huge question that people have always asked, like, how can... Like, okay, first off, we talked about the, the two tantric types of sex, which is restorative and transformational. Um, how can one have tantric sex? Yeah, I think one of the first things to note is just to have this menu available. Right. To, to begin to speak to people and be open about your sexual experience um, because it creates evidence for other people to begin to have more pleasure in their bodies. I think that another really important piece is just being more aware of how life force sexual energy moves in your body. So many tantric lineages use the kundalini chakra system as this map in our bodies. Yeah. I'm not sure how familiar your listeners would be with that. Right. Do you want I can to just talk go very it? briefly into yeah. it. So the kundalini chakra system is this belief that we are energetic beings. We have seven chakras that start at our root, you know, really in our sexual center, go all the way up to the crown of our head, and each one governs a different aspect of our being. And this energy, this life force, this kundalini is synonymous in many ways with our sexual energy, mm -hmm. our life force energy. And it rests at the base of our spine, really near our sexual organs. Mm -hmm. And so for a lot of people, when we're having sex, we're awakening this energy. Mm -hmm. But very often it stays in those lower chakras. It's almost like we're masturbating with another person and kind of just keeping that energy down or like orgasming it out. Right. Right. With tantric intimacy and tantric sex, one opportunity that you can do to maximize this energy is to actually guide that energy up through your chakra system, maybe into your heart chakra, maybe into your throat chakra, maybe all the way out and up your crown chakra. And as that energy is moving up your body, you are creating space to clear emotions. Like, you know, the body keeps the score. We keep right. our emotions. Yeah. Stuck. So it's like clearing that out. And it's also increasing our capacity for pleasure. How do you move that energy? Yeah, like is how does one do that <laughs> would be my main question. Because I think all my listeners and, and viewers are interested. Yeah. They just want to know practical advice. Like yeah. how can I live this way? How can I practice this? How can I have this kind of sex? Yeah, so I will say one of the, one of the reasons that I wrote my book is because I find that a lot of tantric texts and lineages and teachings are very esoteric yeah. or prescriptive in nature. They're yeah. kind of like hard to follow. Yeah. And so in essence, how this energy can move in your body, um, this is where the more white tantric principles that are less sexual can support you. Doing things like tantric breath work, uh, tantric yoga can be really supportive. But even as simple as when you feel that like turn on in your cock or in your pussy, tuning into that turn on and with a deep breath, inhaling the energy up, Ooh. imagining the energy traveling <laughs> up in, up into your heart. It's a mindfulness practice, but mm -hmm. you can also use even your movements in your body. Like your mm -hmm. body wants like, to oof. move as a way to move the energy. It's like <laughs> doing those undulating patterns. And I'll, I'll say too, a lot of people feel really uncomfortable making sound yeah. during intimacy, but set, like making sound is such a great way to mm -hmm. move the pleasure. 
And so leaning into that piece as well, like actually sounding out can help move the energy up in your body. Yeah, like moaning. Like just let go and moan. Moaning, laughing, ah. screaming, whatever feels yeah. authentic. Yeah. Okay, so now that, you know, you kind of listed out the different practices, I already lived this life. Yes. I just don't say it as tantric, yep. but it is because oh, I do sure. my um, breath work uh, almost daily. I do my sexual meditation, which if you guys are interested, I have uh, just free on YouTube guided sexual meditation, a five minute one, a 10 minute one that I'll link in the episode description. But I do sexual meditation and uh sometimes yoga not as much as I would love to like I love yeah. yoga but is there a difference between like let's say flow yoga and like tantric yoga so there are different types of tantric yoga I personally feel like pretty much any type of yoga that's going to be more meditative in nature yeah is going to be supportive for this work like and that being said I had my first not I had my first um, energetic orgasm when I was conscious. I'd had energetic orgasms in my sleep, but my first one that I had when I was conscious was in a Bikram class here in LA. And it was just in the middle of the session, the teacher had us go into <laughs> frog pose, which yeah. opens up your sacral chakra, which is your sexual chakra. Uh -huh. And so I went into that pose and then immediately went into an energetic orgasm in the class. Wow. Did um, you moan? Were you like Meg Ryan? Like, <laughs> There, oh, I like, like I did more like yeah. girl, what is going on <laughs> I want I want one of those <laughs> yeah I did some sounding but I kept it yeah like this is whatever she's having this is an appropriate moan that one would make when they're like doing a good stretch Ooh, wow. but I, I I was feeling more than yeah more wanted to be expressed but body movement then is a big part of tantra it is. yeah okay so tantric sex is like basically comprise of these different practices that people do daily to contribute to when they have um, whether it's oral manual stimulation or penetrative sex uh, it's a part of the sexual encounter that they have yeah so the three basic tools of tantra for moving energy as well as dropping into the present moment yes. are sound breath and movement okay sound breath movement mm -hmm. so sound would be like letting go moaning out or even like yeah. taking deep breaths and just like <sighs> yeah, right. absolutely. And then uh, breath would be like breath work. Breath work or even just like being really conscious with your breath. Taking if you're finding breaths. yourself stuck in your head, distracted, unable to be present for the pleasure in your body, tuning into the the gift that is breath. Like breath is keeping you alive in every yes. moment, which is like such a gift of love yes. from our universe. So just And such a huge direct there is a direct effect to your genital as you like yeah. breathe through your nose and for men that experience like erectile dysfunction breathing through your nose goes directly to like your penis and if you are in a position where you don't want to try pharmaceutical I would highly recommend uh, breath work because it's there so are powerful. many accounts of people that heal their ED from breath work because the nose is connected to yeah. the penis. Yeah, and premature ejaculation too. Like I work with so many men that want to last longer. And I think that this is, we might be talking about this later, yeah. but <laughs> I'm yeah. going into it now. Yeah. They use, you, you can use breath to, when you feel that overwhelm, that all of that energy. Like you're going to come. <laughs> it, it's, it's stuck in your, in your cock, in your, in your root, in your sacral chakra. And so you can actually use your breath to move that energy. So it's less overwhelming in that space. And for women as well, I have a lot of women that come to me that have pain during intercourse, um, that can't orgasm. Yeah. Yeah. And that pain is often because they're like tensing their muscles yeah. in their pussy. And it's just like a deep relaxing breath softening mm -hmm. those muscles. And suddenly they don't have pain anymore mm -hmm. and they can orgasm. It's pretty wild. That is wild. It's yeah. the wild, wild east. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how can Tantra make people's sex lives better? How can Tantra make people's sex lives better? To me – what Tantra creates is a level level of depth and connection that is unparalleled. Again, it goes back to that idea of are you masturbating with someone's body or are you connecting to their energy and using this sexual energy to co-create together mm -hmm. and to like feel this connection between two embodied beings that are also souls? I mean, I don't know. I feel like this is just such a big, big big, big question. Yeah. Um, 
but for me, it's 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 just added the level of depth and connection that I didn't know yeah. was possible. And I think that's what people really, really want. Like that's the deeper pleasure. Yeah. Like there is the pleasure of getting off, but the deeper pleasure I feel as human beings is to connect with love and in mm-hmm. in our hearts. And that's like the lasting pleasure. Yeah. For me, uh, ever since I started practicing sexual mindfulness, uh, like meditation and breath work, which I now know is a part of like tantric sex, like yep. lifestyle, I have seen like three specific benefits. Uh, the first one is I can have multiple orgasms. Yes. Prior to practicing this, I never had multiple orgasms. Like I also rarely had orgasms to begin wow. with. So ever since I started practicing this, I have had multiple orgasms every single time I have a sexual encounter. Mm-hmm. So that's like the biggest benefit that I have seen through practicing Tantra. Um, the second benefit is I'm able to like engage in like dirty talk and verbalizing more things in bed than before. I think that's because it's like a part of me accepting who I am yes. and accepting our, yeah. like you said, co-creation. Like we're just here together. We're just human. None of us know like what's best, like how to do this best. We're just sharing. Like we're uh-huh. just doing this together. So might as well say something. So I think the second benefit for me is like the ability to verbalize things after yeah. practicing this for a while and feeling that like confidence which leads to my third benefits uh, of tantra for me is the connection i have with my own body because in the past like in my 20s i've had i've had a lot of sex but it wasn't super pleasurable it could it was fun like many times like sometimes was it but sometimes was very fun there's a lot of like lust and desires in it yeah but i wasn't really in it like my whole body and my mind and my attention wasn't like fully in it but with my um now husband and ever since i started practicing tantra i feel like our sex is so meaningful to me because i know how how to like move it in my body yeah and when you talk about the moving of energy i can tell sometimes when i have like kind of a rush sex where I'm not activating all of those and I'm just like, okay, let's do this. It's kind of like maintenance yeah. versus the sex where I pay attention. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's definitely being more present and like having that, uh, that like tantric philosophies, if you will. Yeah. So those are some of my like experiences. Yeah, absolutely. I would say before this world, I thought that there was just good sex and bad sex and most of my sex was bad sex in that I didn't know what I really wanted. I didn't know how to communicate my boundaries and desires. I was worried about my body and judging my body the entire time. And Tantra cleared up all of that so that I could actually be in the present moment, Mm -hmm. ask for what I wanted, set the boundaries that I needed to feel really safe. And that safety created the ability for me to be in the present moment and really be with my pleasure. Mm -hmm. And would you say you're able to do all of these things from living the Tantric lifestyle? Yeah, I think that that's a really important piece that it's not just like something you do once. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 an integrated approach. And I mean, it's it's incredible. It's powerful. Your whole life can change when you begin to just again bring more presence into your day to day to to feel into where is the pleasure in any moment? How mm-hmm. can I how can I make my life a living meditation of pleasure? in each moment asking, how can I make this moment more pleasurable? How can I be more present? How can I be turned on by the environment around me? (laughs) Anything. Yeah. So has your life changed completely? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... Through Tantra and Tantric sex. Yeah. Obviously, my sex and my, you know, intimate relationships improved, right. but also my friendships improved. Yeah. And I felt empowered to step in my into my purpose. Like, I started to really believe in myself. And then I started to make money and, yeah. like, be able to create a life that I really, like, relished and loved because I wasn't Sex that makes you money. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, sex magic. We'll get to that. But I mean, it's incredible. It's really, really powerful. Wow. So obviously you would highly recommend that people start practicing some of these practices. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I love that. So can men come without ejaculation using like tantric technique? I've heard some men told me, I, I went to Amsterdam and like met like uh, these guys, they're very spiritual and they were talking about how like they can experience orgasm and in, you know, like in Western education, in like human sexuality or anatomy or reproductive system, we learn like when men come, they ejaculate. Mm-hmm. But 
apparently through like tantric technique, men can come without ejaculation. Yeah, it's such a novel concept and people do not believe it, but I've seen right. it happen I many mean, times. Many, many, many times. Men that don't think that it's possible and then they you know, try some of the tantric practices and then suddenly they're having energetic orgasms regularly and it's just mind boggling. So it is a lot of the breathwork techniques that, that, you know, we talked about. Montauk Chia has a good book about, for men specifically, it's called The Multi-Orgasmic Man. Ooh. Yeah. His, his approach is a little bit more of that prescriptive nature. It's like, you know, like breathe in five times, breathe yeah, out eight times, like that. Yeah, it's like that. And so I like to say these are tools, not rules. So try it on. But it's it's a powerful, powerful uh, way to to practice. But my husband never read that book before being with me. He had never had an energetic orgasm, and now he does. <gasps> and just from you know the very basic, rudimentary breath work and you know presence practices that I've incorporated as well as the other tools that he's found on his own and the trainings that I've suggested he do. It's not all me. But. So it's so he he does breath work regularly. He doesn't necessarily do breath work regularly, mm-hmm. but he uses breath work in our intimacy and in his own intimacy practices and his self-pleasure as well. What's one of your favorite breath work? Okay, so partnered or solo? <laughs> Ooh, okay. Ooh, I let me think. I guess solo because when I do breath work, a lot of times I do solo, but I just do the very basic four yeah. in, four pause, four out. That's a great one. Because it's just easy and it's all four, four, four. So I remember I just go and then I go and I go. Yeah. So I, I love and that's great for like just nervous system regulation overall yeah, it's as like well. It's basic. Awesome. I can do it anytime. I can be driving and I'm like pissed that someone like, you know, yeah. <laughs> merge into my lane without asking. Yeah. But then I would just do that and feel better. Yeah. It's it's great. Okay. So I'll share. So for one thing, you don't it doesn't even need to be like a particular framework. I kind of trust my breath as well. But when I'm getting close to orgasming, I'll just breathe like and hold, like kind of do a Kegel and breathe it into my heart and then hold the inhale as long as I can and then release. But there's also a technique called onking. And I got this actually from Elizabeth April, who's like, she does like multidimensional channeling. I don't know. It's like a whole other topic, but I I feel like I need to give her credit for giving this to me. Um, But it's a practice called onking. And onking is this symbol in ancient Egyptian culture. It's like a cross with a loop on the top. Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I've seen it. Okay, so in 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 ancient Egypt, that symbol meant like life force. It was kind of synonymous as well with kundalini. But the idea is that your body is kind of in the shape of the ankh, meaning like the bottom part of the ankh or the cross is at your genitals. Yeah. The cross is at your heart and your arms are like crossing out. And then there's a loop and it's your head, right? Yeah. So with onking, when you start to get to that place of – I'm going to orgasm soon. You breathe the energy into your heart. You shoot it out your back. And then imagine (laughs) it's coming around your head. It's like orbiting into like the ether and then coming back into your heart and then back down. So you like breathe into your heart, hold, shoot the energy up and around, breathe in a little bit more, and then you exhale. Whoa. Yeah. And it does, like it expands your orgasmic potential. My orgasms last longer and then I'm more able to have multiple orgasms then as well. Whoa. I'm going to try onking tonight. Try it. Uh, and this is Get for all like men and women. Men and women. So yeah. I can try it. I can teach my husband to try it. Yeah. If you had your husband with you as well and let's say you're face to face, you could even see it as you are sending the energy into your heart. It's going up and around you both and back into his heart and then down as well. Whoa. And so then it's more like a circuit between you. That's so cool. Yeah. I'm going to be trying onking. How do you spell it? A-N-K-H is onk. Wow. And one thing that I'll say too with these practices, it can be really easy to like get in your head and be right. like, yeah. am I doing it right? I've got to like track the energy. And it's like, do it a few times tracking it. Just and do then it. <laughs> Forget about tracking it right. and just trust that your body knows what it's doing. Yes. I think that's so important. I think that just do it. Nike probably got it right. This is not a sponsorship, by the way. But <laughs> like a lot of times in life, it's like just do it. Because yeah. people just overthink about everything. Like even, you know, as a content creator, I have so many friends that are like, oh, but I don't like this part. I don't like I'm like, just post it. 
Yeah. Like, don't overthink. Just, just do it. Just do it. You'll be surprised. Yeah. And one other thing that I'll note, when you are using breath work and you begin moving your life force energy to other parts of your body or even out of your body, it's very common to have an emotional response. Because again, you're moving this energy and the body keeps the score and very often we're trapping grief from 10 years ago or even past life stuff. And so just know that that it's possible that you might become emotional, but it will feel amazing and beautiful and liberate you at the same time. Great release. Yeah. Yeah. And talking about release, the best kind of sex is safer sex. So I want to talk about my one condoms. So one condoms is the brand and one condoms make these amazing amazing skin-on-skin feel, uh, 85% better body heat transfer with like basically the newest technology. This is one condoms. They have one size for this, but it feels amazing. You know, talking about like heat in heat in the cock and like wanting mm-hmm. to feel the heat when you have penetrative sex with someone, this is gonna, this is gonna give you that. And this is from one condoms. One condoms as a company also have my one condoms, which is honestly my favorite because my one condoms is the only condom brand that has 52 different sizes for you so they make custom condoms just for you like if I'm a man I would want custom suits like you look like you're wearing custom suits like you know custom <laughs> suits are just hot like it's it it shows your like you know that you care that you have like this type of personality um so why wouldn't you get custom condoms if you go to their website which is a link in the description my one fit kit will give you this isn't this fun this is so this fun. Is measurement uh like a little ruler you measure your length and then you measure your girth this is probably my girth. And then you put in the numbers and the letters on the website and order your custom condom. So this is my one condoms. You know, you can also order their kind of like different types of samples. They have snug, they have classic sample, they have uh, like a big one, um, classic, large and snug. These are all samples that you can order to see how, um, how well they fit. But at the same time, like, yeah, just... You can print out or just order this measurement tape and it will help you figure out what your custom condom looks like and you can order one. We love that. I know. We love that. Like, isn't it cool for a guy to have custom condoms? It's kind of hot. It is. like, you care. Every woman I talk to literally (laughs) says that. Like, it's kind of hot. And it's, and it really is. Like, it's not, and it's not just about like attractiveness, right? Like, it is attractive to have custom condoms. But at the same time, you're going to feel comfortable. You're going to feel more confident because it's not too tight, not too loose. Yeah. It's just perfect. Mm -hmm. So definitely check them out. It's one condoms and my one condoms. The links are are in the episode description. Okay, talking about, you know, ejaculation. I have to talk about female ejaculation or female orgasm. How can women watching and listening use some of these strategies to have more um, intense orgasm? And also, I talk to a lot of women that have never had vaginal orgasm. Can this help them? Yeah, I think that it absolutely can help them. I've worked with many women that have never had an internal orgasm um, and then do And I like to say to go into it without expectation and to maybe just have an intention as well. Because if we're too focused on like a particular, like Tantra is not about goals. Goals are about doing and like Mm. making something happen. And it can be really hard to put that pressure on yourself to then be able to be in your pleasure and create space for a squirting orgasm or a multi-orgasmic experience to happen. It's like water running under a faucet. If you try to like grab onto it, not only are you probably not going to be successful, you're also missing the flow, like the beautiful experience that is available for you in that moment. That being said, absolutely, this work can help. Um, I've specifically seen lots of women go in and receive a yoni tantric massage from a professional practitioner. And yoni massage is the pussy massage. Yes. Yeah. Yoni yoni is the Sanskrit word for pussy or Mm -hmm. vagina or vulva. Where would you go get a yoni massage? 
So asking for a friend, <laughs> asking for my assistant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there's a really great website called sacredarrows.com. Oh, interesting. And it's like all tantric practitioners. Now, what I will say is this is not a website where they're like screen like anyone can put a listing on there. So you do need to be highly discerning and, you know, careful. Like this is yeah. your sacred body. Yeah, it's like, bro, it's Craigslist. So <laughs> yeah, we do teach. Uh, I do retreats in Austin, Texas, and we teach uh, how to do a linga massage, how to do a yoni nice. massage. We do a demo. If you want to like stay in the room and do it with a partner and get feedback, that's available. So that's a really great way to get involved with this work as well. When is your next retreat? Our next co-ed retreat is uh, February. So we, okay. do, we do that one twice a year. And then we have a level two that we do as wow. well. Wow. Co-ed retreat is uh, meaning like you can be a single woman or man and then non-binary and go? Yes. Yeah. We welcome people of all genders and relationship status. So we have some lodging that is just for couples and it's like, it's kind of like a bougie glamping location. Oh, we I have like that. a, like yurts and they have like a covered wagon. Um, and then they also have bunks. And so we have space for single, single individuals in the bunks and then the couples have private accommodation. Wow. So the singles can still get yoni massage? Oh, yeah. From someone that they're, they are down to partner with? Exactly. Yeah, you can choose to partner up with someone in the space if you would like. It's right. not, it's like everything's at choice. Right. You don't have to do anything. We're like, you could just yeah. watch this entire retreat from the sidelines and yeah. you would learn a lot. And obviously, you're welcome to engage in the activities as much as you right. desire. It's everything definitely by choice and consent is the most important Absolutely, thing. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but you're saying that if you're single, men, women, or non-binary, you can attend this type of retreat and learn how to give and receive yoni massage and lingam massage. Yes. Lingam is the penis. The cock, and, yeah. Yeah, massage. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. I didn't know you do these retreats. This they're is so my cool. they're my favorite thing. They're I need like to go. Favorite. Please I come. Yeah, I would love to. Yeah. Talking about uh, more like specific sex acts because we were talking about yoni massage, which is the pussy massage. Then we talked about the lingam massage, which is the penis massage. Then I want to talk about like tantra and a couple of like different specific sex acts. Okay. Um. So how can we incorporate tantra in oral sex? It's a great question. That's a really great question. I will also just say too, and I don't know why this is coming through, but my husband is like a very big fan of lingam massage. But Ooh. before we got together, he was like a blowjob dude. And oh. I love giving blowjobs. Like I'm so here for the blowjob. But he has told me that he now prefers my hand jobs or lingam massages over Wow. head which is crazy like mo like men are like what like well I girl not... you have golden hands i do i've got <laughs> i've got the coats but anyways that being said one thing that i really li that i think is so tantric to incorporate into oral whether you're eating a pussy or you're eating a cock is genital gazing so like yoni gazing so taking a moment before you actually go in and like lick to just like witness and witness the celebrate. greatness yeah like like especially for women like this is the portal between worlds that we're looking at like we all yeah. hopefully had you know a natural birth and we're able to come through the vaginal canal either way like it, that's the portal to the womb where we were all created so like taking a moment to really honor this sacred part of our bodies and then another beautiful thing is like pussies look so different but so many women have so much trauma around their pussy and how it looks and it can be really healing to have someone just like look at your pussy celebrate it say what they love about it like watch how the pussy even like begins to open and glisten Aww. just at that like onset yeah um and then another thing about pussies that i love is they all look so different and like some look like a little oyster and some look like a flower blooming yeah and some look like an ear and in sh <laughs> shamanism we call this like transfiguration where like one thing begins to look like something else and there's a message in that so oh. if a pussy looks like an ear it's like having the question in your mind what do I need to listen to right now? Oh. And treating it like a meditation, like treating your partner's body like an oracle in a way. And the same goes for cocks. I just like Oh my God. It. I wish I have a mirror right now so I can look at my pussy and see what it looks like and what message it's communicating. Yeah. Or she is communicating. And she can look different 
every day too because oh. women's bodies are so cyclical. Okay. I'm going to go home tonight and do that as well. Apart yeah. from onking, I'm going to be looking at my pussy and ask my husband what it, what she looks like and yeah. what messages is he receiving. That's a great practice to do on yourself but also with a partner. Too. I love this tip. So gazing. Yeah. Just Look at the cock of pussy and just like celebrate it for a second before you go in. Yeah, like Love take it. a deep breath. Like even if it's like five, ten seconds, it can be so good. Yeah. Yeah. And even in like see what happens if you wait 30 seconds a minute. Like, do you feel like uncomfortable? Do you feel right. awkward? And like, why is that? What shame are you holding on to around your genitals that you might be able to release so you can yeah. be more present in your body and more liberated? You're right. Cause it's like, ooh, why are we pausing? Yeah. Like, why are we pausing so long? What are you looking at? Right? Yeah. Like, it can feel really awkward. But then question yourself, too. Like, why is it awkward? Maybe it, it should be normal. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is a, like, I mean. In, I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah. In many spiritual line lineages, like, the body is a temple. So, like, right. treating it like a temple, you know, in that moment. And it's interesting that very often the first thing that we go to is what's wrong? What's wrong with me? Rather than just receiving yeah. the devotion of someone giving you their full presence at the gates of, like, literally your holy of holies. I'm going to ask right? my husband to give me devotion to my yoni <laughs> tonight. Um, okay, what about touch? Because touch is such a huge, you know, oxytocin, serotonin boost, mm -hmm. right? Like from cuddling, holding hands to like naked cuddling to like massaging the nipples and the breast to massaging the inner thighs or the pubic area. How can like, how can people incorporate more Tantra in their like touch? Yeah. I wouldn't say routine, just in their touch. In their intimate touch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A few things. So one thing is that if you want to have more full body orgasms, you need to warm up your whole body, which means touching your whole body. Mm. So, you know, in Tantra, there is this recommendation to move a bit before intimacy, but also to like take some time to like stroke up your arms, up your legs. Um, I like to use feathers and flowers as well. Wow. And it's because in, in the more Taoist perspective of Tantra, you have yin and yang, right? And yang is the more masculine, intense, fiery, fast approach. And if you look at touch in our world, a lot of touch is more yang. It's like, you know, a quick handshake. It's mm. like hugging and just like, you know, mm. And fast. even the sex that is glorified is yeah. the yang sex. It's exactly. It's that lustful, strong, fast, pop, pop, pop kind of sex. Yeah. yeah. Most porn is incredibly young. young in yeah. nature. Oh, wow. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Right. It, but it's balance, right? Mm -hmm. And so the yin approach is the more slow, sensual, energetic, watery kind of touch. And when you're touching with a feather or a flower, you can't help but do it gently and slowly. And what this gentle, slow touch does is it sends a signal to the nervous system that it's safe to relax and fully be present. And what I find is when I start with that more yin touch and then I build into yang and spanking and yeah. more BDSM, I'm actually so much more present for what's happening in my body and I can receive the pain play mm. more deeply as well because I'm just soft. Mm. So those are some... Thoughts That's such. amazing tips because I'm thinking now like sometimes when the foreplay isn't there yet, I feel t a little bit tense when like my partner like chokes me or pull my hair. I'm like, oh, I'm just, I'm not there yet. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not there to receive and enjoy it. I generally like it, but I need to like be in a certain mind space yeah. to like love it. So that makes so much sense. So I'm, yeah. that's another thing, thing I'm going to try. You've given me so many things to try. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try the onking. Yeah, the feather. I really yeah. like, I really want to try just soft touch to, to begin with. Because we always kind of have more like animalistic, yeah. um, like intense sex. But I want to try that yin. Yeah, it's expanding the range, you know. And that's one to me one of the biggest like antidotes to like – 
intimacy getting stale in long-term relationships yeah. is expanding your range. And so very often people just go like, okay, well, I'm going to like try polyamory and like do BDSM. And I love those things. Don't get me wrong. But we're forgetting this whole other side that is like super subtle and soft. And um, it can be fun just to like put more things on the menu. Yes. You know? Oh, I love that. Well, talking about more things in the menu, this is my last question, but since it's like such a big part of your teachings and it's a whole, you know, part of in your book. Yep. What is sex magic? What is sex magic? It's one of my favorite things to talk about. So I like to sum up sex magic in one sentence, and that is, I will never underestimate the power of getting clear on my deepest desires and masturbating or having sex about it. Oh. So sex magic is based on the law of attraction which if you're unfamiliar with the law of attraction, it's this universal principle that basically states that the more you revel in what feels good and gratitude and love and more high vibrational energies, the more you're going to attract people, opportunities, and experiences that are on that same frequency. And the inverse is true as well. The more you revel in fear, anxiety, stress, uh, entitlement, more of those low vibration energies, the more you're going to attract opportunities, experiences, and people at that frequency. And it's not to say that you shouldn't feel these low vibes. Absolutely, it's a part of being a human, but it's about are you reveling in it versus are you alchemizing it? So what does all of this have to do with your sex life? When do you feel the most pleasure and like connected to something outside of yourself and just generally good? Having an orgasm. Yeah. For <laughs> most of us, it's like, yeah, when you're having an orgasm. And so the idea is like, what if you capitalized on that moment, on that moment of such high vibration? And also in Tantra, there's a belief that every sexual experience, whether it's with another person or with yourself is procreative in nature. Meaning even if you're not actively trying to create a living, breathing child, right. your sexual energy is life force and is able to be channeled to create something. So when you're in those heights of pleasure, when you're in that orgasmic state, creating a five sense reality in your body of the thing that you deeply desire, Ooh. whether it's a material thing like a yeah. new car or- House at the beach. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. It's basically like imagining and visualizing You're like this beautiful yeah. house on the beach. I'm living in it with my husband and my kids and enjoying it and yes. like as I come. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you could do it for like a dream partner. You could do it for work opportunities. You can do it for money. You could do it for just a quality. Like I want to bring more peace into my life. Yeah. You can also do it. One of my favorite ways to do sex magic is to say, what are my blocks? Show me my blocks. So if I'm wanting more money, what are my money mindset blocks, right. for example? Oh, um, and you're able to get some clarity on that. Yeah, absolutely. Very often, even in the moment, like I'll have a light bulb moment or in the following days, wow. I'll get signs or opportunities to love thank yes. you so much for teaching us all about tantra tantric sex and all the other modalities and philosophies as well um, where can people find you and get your book so the book is on amazon just search sacred sex ed or you can find it at my website which is talk tantra to me Dot com. all of the like retreats and other you know things are at that same website uh, on instagram it's at talk tantra to me as well okay awesome thank you so much for teaching us this is amazing Yay. i love it let me know how all these tips go i'm so curious yeah you guys let us know how all these tips go in the comments okay if you're watching listening thank you so much i do this for you uh, so that we can create a more sex positive collective and society so thank you for watching listening don't forget to like subscribe comment and share this episode to everyone you know because sharing is caring have an orgasmic day bye Thanks for listening. This was, this was Love Bites. Love Bites. By Dr. Tara. Follow Dr. Tara on social media at lovebites.co. Have an orgasmic day.